Good morning, traders and investors. Roger Scott here, Senior Strategist for WealthPress. Today is Friday. It's May 26th. Well, tomorrow's my father's 75th birthday. I can hardly believe he's going to be 75 years old. Um, it's about 7.37. The market's going to open up in about an hour and 53 minutes, getting a head start here for you guys so you can get um, your information and your data and your market uh, analysis nice and early before the market opens. Now, today's Friday, and Friday we talk about algos. Now, over the last few weeks, or actually the last few months, the algos have been very, very, very busy, guys and gals, attacking the consumer discretionary sector, rising it, making it go higher, the technology sector, and the communication sector. This week, they weren't doing that at all. That was last week's action. And everybody was watching and waiting for algos to start uh, prepping these stocks lower. They didn't do that. Actually, what the algos did was they took down three sectors quite a bit and shook the heck out of them. Uh, some of them we were in, and I think they're bottoming out, and I like these sectors right now. The consumer staples, the utilities. Look at these downside moves. These last few days right here, this is pure algo plays. Utilities and, 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 where was the last one? There was one more here. And healthcare. So healthcare Consumer staples and utilities have been really beaten down by algos, and I think some buying pressure is going to be coming in. If you look at momentum levels on the utilities, they've bottomed out. Look at that. And look at the chart here. When you look at the chart, you'll see what I'm talking about. Really, really low. Look at the look at the two-day RSI. I mean, that's that's a bottom right there as far as I'm concerned. That's a shakeout. Um, now, look at healthcare. Almost, just a little bit more. But uh, look at XLV, look at the price action. Just looks like it's, it's uh, coming real close to the bottom, maybe just a little bit more. But look at the RSI, the two-day RSI. Looks like it's overdone. And, and finally, look at consumer staples. They look like they have bottomed, as a matter of fact. And we're long right now, consumer staples. And I think the last few days were genuine. I mean, look at this, just a waterfall action. And by the way, if the Fed defaults on the debt ceiling, uh, if, the, if the U.S. defaults, guess what sectors will go up first? Tech or consumer staples? Consumer staples, of course. Healthcare, utilities, not technology. So it's completely counterintuitive to what's going on in the market right now. Um, and to me, this is this is a pure algo ploy right here. These, this Because there was no major fundamental data for this. And you would figure if conservative sectors dropped, then speculative sectors would drop too but they didn't they rallied so this is a pure algo ploy to get you out of these sectors before they rally again and they are all grossly oversold and again if you look at their momentum levels they are done so for example just to give you a visual um, consumer staples five percent trading above the 20-day moving average healthcare 13 percent utilities seven percent the only one that may have a little bit more to go is uh, healthcare sector now i'm going to tell you this is irritating the living life out of my assistant matt because he's using a lot of fundamental data in his analysis like he should and he's like roger this doesn't make any sense this doesn't make any sense well i'm going to tell you something algo trading does not make any sense they simply their job is to just wash out the weak hands and start raising things up so Healthcare looks like it's really overdone. Matter of fact, just to kind of give you an idea, let me just uh, show you this right here. Uh, sorry, sorry, looking at the wrong thing here. Display, oh, there we go. Let's look at a small chart. Sometimes smaller is better, right? <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> All right, look at the momentum levels. We haven't hit momentum levels like this on the RSI in... Looking here, let's see here, 1.77, 181. I don't think we've hit levels like this. Wow, I, I don't even see it. Let's see a year, let's go a year back. Back in 22 when we did this, right here, right here, this, this, right here. This is the last time we saw momentum levels. This downside, and this is also algo, this is totally algo right here. Last time, look at that. Wow, that's... That's, uh, that's a year ago, a year ago. Look at that. So th what we're seeing here, this waterfall looks a lot like this, a lot like this, especially on momentum levels. It's really nuts. That's the healthcare. Let's look at utilities. On utilities, the last time we were down here, this is really interesting for me. I love, I'm a, I'm a technical geek. The last time we were down here, also September 2021, right here. Look at that. So momentum levels are really, really done. And healthcare, 
Well, let's take a look. I think that I think that was healthcare. I think we did healthcare. I think we did utilities. Let's look at consumer staples, right? I mean, I'm just showing you that these momentum levels are just legendary. Um, again, lowest level, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe over here. Let's see. We went to 0.43. No, we're 0.18 now. Huh. Let's see here. L far back as I can remember. Yeah, lowest I can remember. So momentum levels are really down right now. Healthcare, utilities, and consumer staples. Those are the three sectors you need to pay attention to. If you look at the bond market, you will see the bond market doesn't have much downside to go. Momentum levels can't even, the, 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 the momentum levels are diverging from each other because they can't stay this low. So I think we're bottoming out on bonds. And if we are getting good news with the debt ceiling, then it'll, uh, it'll cause bonds to go higher and interest rates to go lower because it'll, it'll boost some confidence in the economy. So uh, again, I think the debt ceiling is going to work out. But again, when you're watching these, the consumer staples, this waterfall, when you're watching utilities, this waterfall, and they're, both, they're all down right at their support level, and you're watching healthcare, which is almost at their levels. It's kind of near their levels, just maybe a little hair more on the healthcare. You gotta, you gotta realize this is a very manipulated, algo manipulated markets. And this week they really targeted those three sectors. For, unfortunately, we were positioned long in, in a few of those sectors, especially consumer staples. And we've been taking it under the chin, but we're holding some positions a little bit longer to compensate for this waterfall. Now, today you're gonna get durable goods, international trades and goods and services, and personal income. Personal income is obviously gonna be the big report, it, followed by international trades and goods and services followed by durable goods so it's like three different orders what i'm looking for is the is the pce and the core year over year i don't care about month over month i want personal consumption to go a little higher but i want the core pc index that's what i want to see and hopefully it'll come right within expectations um, that's the report now let's talk a little bit about the broad market kind of step back a little bit i kind of went a little deep in the beginning today and then i'll talk about what to expect so Markets were sharply higher. Everybody and their mother was watching NVIDIA <laughs> rally. And by the way, we gave a, uh, a signal on NVIDIA on Thursday, uh, actually on Wednesday. And we told folks if it trades higher last half hour of the day, buy. And we've had some folks make some good money. Thank you for those feedbacks. I appreciate it. So they had an amazing guidance, which really helped the entire sector and the chip sector as a whole. But ADI was still down, and it looks like they're making progress on the debt ceiling. U.S. President Joe Biden and McCarthy have moved closer to a deal to raise the debt ceiling and cap federal spending for two years. Uh, NASDAQ posted a 13-month high, thank you, NVIDIA, held by a 24% jump in NVIDIA and the entire semiconductor sector. Blue chips underperformed because, as I mentioned, uh, some algos are, were very, very busy selling consumer staples, healthcare, and utilities this week. Now, economic data showed that initial jobless claims rose to 229,000, uh, stronger than the expectation of 250,000, which is very, very stable. Um, I'm good with that. GDP was okay. It was really a no-brainer, which was good. It didn't really impact things too much. And here's some comments from Fed presidents. Now, I was really besides myself with Squirrely Powell yesterday, how he's just manipulating data, but uh, what are you going to do? President Barkin said, middle of a demand slowdown. And if, if China's going to get another bout of COVID, even if they're not, things are not looking all that great over there. Collins said, while inflation is still too high, there are some promising signs of moderation. Uh, I'll see it when I believe it. Now, here's where things get really juicy. Remember, this was at 90%, the, the percentage, the odds that the Fed is going to raise rates over 90%. Now it's at 58%. And now we have a 41% chance they're going to raise 0.25. Now, I honestly think they should raise 0.25 because it'll just prevent them from raising 0.75 or 0.50 later on. They're going to be raising rates. So to me, this is just lip service for us and uh, to calm us down. But I'm telling you, we need to raise rates. Rates staying where they're at right now is a big, big mistake. The question is, can the, can the Fed raise rates while keeping the economy stable? That's the only reason why they wouldn't. It's becoming clearer by the day uh, that they need to raise rates. There's just no question about it. It's just a matter of uh, pausing now and raising more later or uh, raising now and and, and, uh, and uh, raising less later. But it has to happen. There's, they're not done. They're no close to being done. 
if you guys think this is it, then uh, let's go to Alaska and I'll sell you, uh, I'll sell you some ice, okay? <laughs> so today we're looking at consumption expenditures, core personal consumption expenditures, core durable good orders, core, 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 not the regular stuff, core. Everything I'm looking at is core. Notice I mentioned that to you a few times, core, core. Core is where you want. That's what the Fed is looking at. Very, very important. And in terms of Europe, you got personal spending, consumer expectations. The bond market may be affected, but honestly, I'll be straightforward with you. The stupid debt ceiling is driving the market right now, and uh, it's causing a lot of havoc. In Europe, they're also scared of this debt ceiling because it can cause major ripples in the, U in the UK economy and, and European economy. Uh, they're expecting better than they're digesting better than expected British retail sales da data and continue to monitor negotiations. Mining and tech stocks are leading. Tech stocks I get, mining stocks I don't. Uh, but you know, who, what do I know? Shanghai Composite also closed higher. They were following the rally in semiconductor stocks. They are big, big in semiconductor. Friction is starting to really show its hand with China. They're not moving as fast, and they're talking about another bout of COVID. If that's the case, we're going this this recessionary pressure that we're seeing in the US is only going to continue higher. In Japan, they're a little optimistic about chip maker stocks. I guess everybody was really happy with Nvidia yesterday. Um, Gap, Gap, the retailer, they're up because of, they unexpectedly had good profits, which is really hard to believe. But then again, Gap is a, is a fairly reasonably discounted merchant. They're not that expensive. And people are moving towards lower, uh, lower level of buying, like from big supermarkets to Walmart. So that could be it. Marvel technology climbed, uh, semiconductors. This is a great week for semiconductors. Uh, don't hold your breath because it's not gonna be that way for a long time. And we are pretty much done with earnings. Now I'm watching the bond market, uh, which is very oversold as well with the rest of these. By the way, the bond market, bonds sold off and uh, higher interest rates are not really good for these sectors, utilities, consumer staples, but they're not good for other sectors. So it's not an excuse. This is just an algo right here. The last three days, algo selling pressure. So keep your eye on XLU to start giving us some upside, consumer staples to be giving us some upside, and maybe even healthcare to be giving us some ups upside. But again, algos in full effect. Folks, next week, next week, here's what I want you to be careful for. Be careful of, not for, my, my grammar. I think this this this, uh, this QQQ here is so overdone, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. L look at this. I mean, the, the momentum levels can't even sustain these levels. I mean, talk about, talk about divergence, right? Look at that. Down, still going up. It's insane. So I think we're going to start seeing some selling pressure come into the tech stocks, um, software stocks, stocks that are, have been going up and I think a lot of that, a lot of that money is going to be going into consumer staples, consumer uh, utilities, and possibly healthcare stocks, which are pretty friendly to a nasty economy. And remember, you're still going to be buying consumer staples no matter what happens to the economy. You're still going to be paying for water and energy no matter what happens to the economy, and you're still going to need your healthcare. So I see those three sectors as being a lot more important when we're potentially closing down the federal government than chip stocks. You're not gonna be buying new chips for your computer, but you will be buying water and Campbell's soup. That I can guarantee you, um, and, and cereal. So keep your eye on those three sectors. Now, before I let you go for your weekend, I got something important for you. Today's a big day, a big, big day for some some fellow trader. Uh, his name is Lance Polito to go long the weekend Weekend effect trades. Yes, the weekend, long weekend effect trades. These are trades he takes before a long holiday weekend. And when the market is closed on Monday, that extra day of time allows his favorite trades an extra day to move. In the past, this phenomena has been very powerful. And Lance is, so, Lance is very excited to trade this coming Memorial Day weekend. He's holding a special live training session at 1.30 Eastern time today. Click the link below, save your seat, for this free session, 1.30 Eastern Time, today, Friday, Lance Polito, and he's gonna give you an extra day to make money because Mondays are closed uh, for, for Memorial Day. And by the way, the seasonality for Memorial Day is eh, very wanky, so don't go on that. But Lance has got something really hot, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time, today, on Friday. Follow the link below. Now remember something. I want you to like this channel, subscribe to our YouTube Wealth Press channel, post comments and feedback. 
I want to see what you guys have to say for yourselves and have an amazing holiday weekend. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, support at marketgeeks.com. I'm always there for you. Uncle Roger is always there for you. Bye. Have a great weekend. And remember, algos are on the attack on consumer staples, healthcare, and utilities. There you go. Bye.